Konnichi fucking well, lads. Today we're going to talk about everyone's favourite absentee parent. No, no, who hired you? No, not Nelson's dad. Change the picture. We're going to talk about Persephone and who she is. As ever, comment on which character you want me to do next below. Now, back to Persephone. We'll be looking at the Orphic version of Persephone. So if it gets weird, don't blame me. Blame that emo fucker over there. Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. Now who knew Zeus was a granny shagger, a dirty bastard? You dirty pig! Persephone is associated with her mother as the maiden goddess of vegetation and harvest. Additionally, through her marriage to Hades, she serves as a guardian to souls in the underworld. Although the writer Hesiod, a contemporary of Homer, would probably disagree with that as he described her as the dread Persephone. Persephone is said to be the mother of Dionysus due to a dalliance with her own father gone very wrong. If you've seen my recent video or spoken to the Greek equivalent of David Bowie, and I really hope you know who David Bowie is, but I'm going to put a picture in there anyway for all you 15 year olds. You'll understand that our dashing protagonist Zagreus and our resident pisshead Dionysus are considered to be one and the same being actually within mythology, although there's a lot of differentiation due to a lot of fanfics knocking around. Thankfully, the lovely writers over at Supergiant Games aren't into that weird subgenre of porn. Thus, Persephone is the mother of Zagreus, whilst Zeus and Semele are the parents of that alcoholic pisshead Dionysus. Interesting fact about Persephone right now, and what I think she's actually doing, is fighting Aphrodite to bang the original Brad Pitt that is Adonis. Lovely time of year to go to a seaside resort, eh? Now, Hades, being a clear family man. You again. So tell me something, father, if you please, since we're more candid lately in regard to matters of my birthright here and all. Did you and mother, how to put this, any brothers or sisters I should know about? I thought I told you never to invoke her here. Be thankful that you have no blasted kin. You've such weak blood and such a temperament. Why then would you think I'd risk another such as you? You may ask, how did the lovely, cordial, and family oriented Hades manage to snag such a lovely wife? The answer, disturbingly, is that he kidnapped her, or a polite request to Zeus, depending on how grim dark you're feeling today. Now the kidnapping has far more archaeological evidence, with its depiction being discovered on friezes within Amphipolis and the old Macedonian capital Agia. However, Orpheus pretty much states that she was kidnapped in his Orphic hymn, referring to her as the kidnapped bride. Apparently she fell in love with Hades, and that worked because who doesn't love an asshole? Everyone loves their kidnappers, right? Jesus. If Orpheus wasn't married to a tree, I'd actually think he was an incel. So quickly to expand on Persephone's backstory and how she ended up becoming the mother of Zagreus. Spoiler, if you didn't know. Persephone was a child and she once existed in Olympus alongside all of the other gods. One morning, she was playing in the garden, picking the flowers her favourite being the Narcissus flower. On one occasion, however, whilst she was picking flowers with her good friend, a nymph, Gaia and Zeus set a trap. She picked her favourite flower, and the earth suddenly opened up, and out of a very, very fierce, dark blackness, Hades emerged and grabbed her. Hades, from his place in the underworld, had sat, thinking to himself of Persephone. Such thought says, Damn, girl, look at that ass! Show me those palms of power, or whatever weird thoughts that crossed his mind at the time. Ugh. Actually, I'm really glad I don't know what Hades thinks when he's horny. I don't want to know. As Hades captured Persephone, she screamed for her father or mother to help her. Zeus, having agreed to the deal, consigned her to her fate. Meanwhile, Demeter heard her cries and rushed to the garden in which she had been playing. In the underworld, Persephone was now under Hades' control. Demeter did not know this, so when she approached the garden and asked the nymph where her daughter had gone, the nymph's inability to answer filled her with a terrible sense of dread. Stricken with grief, Demeter scoured the earth in search of her daughter, her immense sorrow and searching causing the earth to grow dark, cold and barren. The first occurrence of winter within the Greek world. 
the tree leaves turned yellow, plants ceased to grow, and no seed would take root. Having searched the whole of Hellas, Demeter finally asked Helios, the god whose job it was to drag the motherfucking sun across the sky every goddamn day for eternity. What a job he must have. So he definitely saw that cheeky cheeky cunt steal Persephone. Helios told Demeter of Persephone's marriage to Hades as he'd witnessed it all as it was his job every day to fly over the earth dragging the sun. Demeter's blood boiled with motherly rage. She went to Zeus and demanded of that arrogant prick what he had done with Persephone and why he would not return her to her care. She demanded of Zeus to return her, but Zeus was like, nah, fuck you cunt. I'm not dealing with this today. I'm gonna get pissed on Nectar. I'm gonna deal with this tomorrow. Right, you deal with it. I'm gonna go see some sexy nymphs. Obviously, Demeter was not pleased by this answer. Demeter left Olympus and ceased to care for the earth as revenge against Zeus for being a bit of a dick. By leaving her duties, what was originally a winter became the end of the world. Those yellow meadows blackened and turned to dust. The trees began to die. Zeus, seeing the only thing he really cared about, his realm, dying, was left with no other choice but to attempt to renege on the deal he had agreed with Hades. So, he sent his clever tricks to son Hermes to bring Persephone back. Hermes reached the underworld and requested Persephone come back with him and rejoin her mother and father. Hades, whilst a dick, was not stupid enough to challenge Zeus over this, so he acquiesced. However, in the underworld, Persephone had grown to love Hades. Hades had been kind, treated her with love and compassion. As she would have up in Olympus, she remained eternally beautiful and young. Hades admired not only these facets of her character, but also the fact that she was kind and nurturing. It was the complete antithesis of Hades. Persephone, however, was an Olympian and missed her dear mother greatly and to a lesser extent her philandering douche of a dad. Before Persephone departed the underworld with Hermes, Hades offered kind words to Persephone. He promised to forever be a good and loving husband upon her return. He gave her a pomegranate, a pom of power, as a farewell gift. This was, however, a trick by Hades. Hades and all Olympians knew that if anyone ate or drank anything in the underworld, they would be destined to remain there for eternity. Now, Persephone thought that if she ate part of the pomegranate, she wouldn't be bound there for eternity in what is literally the dumbest piece of writing I can imagine, but it's just a fanfic, so it's okay. She ate six seeds from the pomegranate, not all of it, thanked her husband, promised to love him and return when she could. The fates had cautioned that if you ate anything of the underworld, you would be cursed to return. Meanwhile, Zeus summoned Rhea and asked her to bring Demeter so as to be reunited with her daughter. Together, Demeter and Persephone cried tears of joy and felt relieved. Persephone told the story of her capture to her mother, and for the return of Persephone, Zeus demanded that Demeter never rebel again. She was bound to tend the earth so long as she was with her daughter. There was a catch to all of this, however. Hades, being a cheeky cheeky cunt, and having a bit of a brain, probably learned some lessons from our boy Sisyphus, deceived Persephone when he gave her the pomegranate. For the six seeds that she had eaten, she would be forced to return for one month in every year to the underworld. Meanwhile, the other six months could be spent in Olympus with her mother. Thus, whilst Persephone was on the earth reunited with her mother, the land was fertile, tended to, the crops grew, the trees bore fruit, and it rained often. However, when Persephone left the land and entered Hades' domain, the earth experienced a cold, dark period of no growth. Demeter grieved for her daughter each time she left and failed to tend the land. Thus, according to Greek mythology, this is how the seasons in the world exist. Persephone is an interesting goddess. She was used to explain the perennial change of the seasons with three to six months of her absence representing winter. However, this could be an allegory for the way Greeks stored their grain, as they stored it underground, and the Greek planting season was in autumn, not spring. So take it with a pinch of salt, because we're not really sure which one's correct. Persephone and her mother represented the loss a mother feels when her daughter is married away into another family. So far, she's been absent in the game, aside from that cheeky little letter she left, and potentially something else that's come out with the new update that I'm yet to meet in-game. I quickly want to thank everyone who subscribed. Thank you for your support and enjoying my content. It's especially important as I live out my woo-flu apocalypse fantasy here in Japan. But as fun as you can imagine, to be honest. Fighting people for toilet paper. As ever, guys, tell me which character you want me to do next. Throw our lads.